Let's talk about how to color day for night shots. At the start here, I wanna make it clear, I'm not given an exact guide because every shot's gonna be different. You're gonna have different lighting situations and different cameras. And because of this, you're gonna have different problems that arise because of the mix of those two. So I guess this is more of a guide on how to use the different techniques to sell the effect of day for night. Okay, so here is our first shot. And we have a character come into frame and we're guessing that this character is going to be the character of interest for this shot and then over here we have a uh, a light coming in from the left shining on everyone so we want to bring that down so our brightest point is going to be over here and as you can see this left hand side we bring this back this left hand side's way brighter than our person so i'm going to come into the power window I'm just going to drop that down. So the idea here is to drop down things that are in the frame that aren't really helping at all. So here is our dropping down. I'll really drop down that wall. You don't want to overdo it, but that seems like a good amount. You know, we pulled down a lot of that. We have this character coming into frame. Him being on the uh, darker background really makes him look like he's... Uh, a lot brighter so now traditionally what people will say oh is you know take your shadows or your lift control and you want to go to blue what ends up happening when you just do this is all of your blacks turn blue and I don't know if you've been outside but I'm pretty sure the darkness isn't blue like this and your skin isn't purple so I don't really like doing it that way. What I like to do is go into your offset, and if we have the moon shining down at us and it's a blue moon, everything is gonna be lit with a blue light. So I'm just gonna come into our offset. We're gonna add that blue look to it. Now we have everything that is looking blue. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get back all of those darker points and anything that if you look in your room or you, anywhere that there's a shadow, what you'll see is that you're going to lose saturation. That's the biggest thing is that you're losing saturation. It's not turning blue. The light source is the moon, which is a blue light. So that's causing blue. But in the shadows, when you're outside, you're, sh you're you know, the shadows during when the moon, anyways. All right, so what I did is I clicked on the skin tones because I want to maintain their saturation level. And then I clicked on um, some of these shadows and I can see that they fall down in here, but I'm actually going to bring this back to, I would say about here. And we're just going to bring down our saturation levels for those, All right? So now we're bringing down that blue that was in our shadows. And if we make this a little bigger, we can see the detail and we can tell that, you know, the highlights are a little blue. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw up a parallel, is this one I wanna have more saturation, more, um, or excuse me, not saturation, more contrast with the shadows. So I'm just gonna come over to our curves and just get the something like something like that right so now we have if we play we have a shot now we do are we are getting a little bit of a purple in the skin and we can we can fix that and then another big thing as you can see like right here this shirt whoo that's bright so we want to knock that down so we're going to just make another shot or another uh node and I'm going to do another gradient but for this gradient I don't want this to affect because if I just do this it's going to affect all up in here I don't want it to affect up there I just want it to affect here so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our qualifier and we're going to attempt to qualify just this shirt so what I'm actually going to do is we're going to bring up our saturation. 
see if we can get a little bit more of this jacket in here. Or shirt. Something like that. I would say that that looks good so far. Widen this up a little bit. And like I was saying, this is going to complete, you know, this is going to be different for every situation where you have to do this kind of a thing. Okay, so now we have that. What we're going to do is we're just going to knock that down just a little bit and we're going to pull back saturation on that jacket. So something, oops, shirt. I don't know why I keep saying jacket. So something like this, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of getting there. One thing that I do want to do is I um, make another node is that I want to try to pull out some of these purples. So we'll come over Huber or Hue. Actually, no, we're not going to Huber's Hue. We're going to Saturation. And that's kind of in the blues, purples. I'm just going to try to drop that down just a little bit. We're going to widen this up a little. Something like that. Okay, now the big, the other big thing that you have to take in consideration here is you're, you're having a shot that is starting to get, you know, a bit lower when it comes to luminance values. If you're not on a calibrated monitor, this is going to start to look crunchy. So I would, when you're when you're working with shots like this, you want to, you know, work on a couple of, with a couple of different types of monitors and see what it looks like. Another thing that you could do here is you might want to, you know, throw in, uh, you could quickly just throw in another thing to make it seem like it's a little darker, something like this. And then we'll just flip this and then just little, little adjustments, you know, little, little guys like that. Something, you know what I mean? And you can track that actually, speaking about tracking, how does this, how does this look throughout the shot? That doesn't look all that bad. Okay, it does actually kind of look bad. All right, so what we'll do is we will come back to a spot that it actually looks a little better, like right in here. And then we'll track this node that has this power window. Take off 3D and take off zoom because we're not moving like that. Something of that nature. Come back and track it this way too. All right. See how it looks. It's looking all right. I mean, if you wanted to, you could drop this down a little bit more. Uh, like I said, for all these shots, there's a ton of different things you can do, but I just wanted to show you a couple of different tools or tactics or whatever to get a good day to night kind of a kind of a look going here. While I was editing this episode, I noticed that up here, um, there's almost like a blue, I don't know, <laughs> an edge almost. I just wanted to quickly show you how to get rid of that. So if we come back into our uh, loom versus saturation curves and quickly just click right here and you can see that I didn't bring this down far enough. So if I just pull this down and we can just lift up a, another point here, uh, we can easily get rid of that. So now we don't have that edge there that looked terrible. I don't know how I didn't notice that while I was filming this episode. So the idea is in the shadows, make them kind of contrasty. Make sure that you're not tinting your uh, your blacks considerably. You don't want it to, you know, everything to be like really dark. Uh, try to make, try not to make things chunky and really contrasty with your shadows because you kind of, you do want to try to preserve some of the, uh, the data in your shadows. Um, don't be afraid of, of blacks. If, if there is a, you know, a, a part like back in here, you can barely see anything down in here. You can't see anything, but you know, it's just something to, to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to quickly give you a little idea on how to do day for night and still maintain higher quality look, um, for your shot. Again, my name's JR and See you when I see you. Wow. Yeah.